Good morning friends. Welcome back to Panica Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss how to read the input from the user through keyboard and how to display output back to the user in the console. All these things I will discuss in detail for you. So I sincerely request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. So these things we will call it as input and output. So reading the input from the user through keyboard is called as input. Displaying the output on the console is called as output. First I will discuss in detail about the output then I will discuss about the input. Now if you want to display the output we need to use the system.out okay where system is a class which is available in the package called java.lang. So in java.lang package there is a class called system. Using this one, we can take the input from the user and display output back to the user. So, for displaying the output, we need to use a field called out. Okay, so system is a class and out is a field. And we have two methods called print ln and print. These are the two methods which will be useful for you to display the output. Now first let me discuss about the system.out.println then print. Okay. Suppose if you write system where yes should be capital. System.out.println If I write something. Pannika tutorials. If I write Pernica tutorials, again if I write system dot out dot print ln learn Java. Learn Java. If I execute these two statements, I will get the output as Pernica tutorials in one line. In another line, I will get the output as learn Java. So this is the output you can export. Like in the first line, you will get output as Pernica tutorials. In the new line, you will get an output called learn Java. So the print ln method will print whatever is given in this one and then it will go to the new line. So ln is nothing but go for the new line. So similarly here learn Java after printing the learn Java, the console will go to the next line. I hope you are able to understand. In place of print ln, if I simply use print and print here, then I will get the output as Pernica tutorial. See, in that case, I no need to give space. See, for your understanding, I have removed it. Then obviously, you need to adjust the space. Okay. So, in this case, you will get the output as Pernica tutorials. In the same line, you will get the output as learn Java. Okay, so the print method will display the thing and it will not go to the new line. Okay, and as you did not even given any escape character or backslash character backslash n. So learn Java is printed in the same line. If you want to go for the new line with the help of the print method only in this case you can use the backslash n. Okay, then backslash n is a new line character. So after printing Pernica tutorials, it will come to the new line and then you will get the output as learn Java. So I hope you have understood the print ln and print. The only difference is that print ln will display the thing and it will go to the new line whereas print will display the thing and stay in the same line. Okay. If you want to exclusively go for the new line, then you can use the backslash n. Similarly, similarly we can display the output using the system class okay there is a field called err and then you can use the method called print ln here also whatever you write suppose if you write message the same message will be displayed as an output so you can use the out field and also you can use the err field also but only difference between these two is that the out field is whatever you are writing is an output but whatever you are displaying using this err field is an error message okay 
The only thing is that both will work in the same way, but whatever you are displaying using the outfield is an outfield is an output. But whatever you are displaying using ERR field is an error message. Okay. However, both will work in the same way. So I hope you have understood how to display output on the console. To read the input from the user, we will use the in field. When we are displaying the output, we have used the field called out in the system class. So system is a class and in is a field. So this will be useful for you to read the input from the keyboard. Read the input from the keyboard. Now, from the keyboard, you, whatever the user has entered, you need to transfer it. Am I right? Into the memory. So, to transfer it, we need to use a streams. So, stream is a stream is used to transfer the content from keyboard to the user and user to the memory. All these things we can do with the help of a stream. Stream is just like a pipe. So, if you have a keyboard, whatever the user is entering from the keyboard, he is entering, it should come to the you. So, we need to use two streams. Okay, let me use the first stream. The first stream is input stream reader. That is the first stream you need to use. So, for this stream, you need to use another stream called buffered reader buffered reader. So, using these two streams, you can read the input from the keyboard. So, to the keyboard, the input stream reader is connected. To the input stream reader, buffered reader stream is connected. Now, let me discuss how can you use this one. So, you have a class called input stream reader. Remember the point. Here, I Yes, R is in capital letters. Then you will have to create an object. I am creating an object called I for it. Okay. Then I will write new in the same line due to the space issue. I am writing down. So input stream reader I is equal to new input stream reader. And here in the braces, in the braces, you need to provide system.in because you are connecting this input stream reader to the keyboard. So, if you want to read the input from the keyboard, you need to use system.in. So, this is the syntax to create an object for the input stream reader. So, input stream reader object name is equal to new input stream reader. You need to pass the system.in. Then, you need to connect the buffered reader. So, buffered reader, okay, something R is equal to new buffered reader. Let me write here buffered reader, where again remember one thing the B and R should be capital. And here you need to pass the object of the input stream reader. So, I. So, this is the way you can create the objects for the input stream reader and the R, buffered reader, object is R. You can give any names, I simply for simplify, I have written it as I and R, you can create any objects. Then once you create the objects for the input stream reader and buffered reader, the meaning is that to the keyboard you have connected the input stream reader object and for the input stream reader you have connected the buffered reader object. Now, you can use the methods called read to read a character. This will be useful for you to read a, a character. If you want to read a single character from the keyboard, you can use the read method. If you want to read the line, then you can raise read line where L should be capital letters. Okay, this will be useful for you to read a line. Okay, enter links, the entire line or a string you want to read or a number you want to read, then you can use this one. Simply, if you want to read a single character, you can use the read. So, I hope you have understood. And one more important point, to use these two classes, 
you need to import java.io package so from java the j should be small letters java io dot star so this is the package you need to use to use this input stream reader and buffer reader i hope you have got the point now let me write the complete program for better understanding let me first import the package so import i hope it is visible for you or let me write from here import java dot io dot star okay and then i'm writing class something uh re input or let me write read input something i'm writing read input or something okay then i'm giving the braces so this is the file name should be the file name whatever you are creating it should be read input so then you need know that we need to use public static void main okay then p and s should be small letters only public static void main and s should be capital string args okay then you need to use the input stream reader input stream reader okay there should be no space okay input stream reader is a single word okay where e i s r should be capital letter some object you can use any name new input stream reader okay you have to use here system dot in okay similarly you need to use the buffered reader okay where b and r should be in capital letters r is equal to new buffered reader and you need to pass the object i okay and here you need to throw the exception if it does not throw the exception what will happen i will discuss throws you need to write a statement called exception okay so whatever the exceptions will be raised it will be thrown okay now look at here i want to read some character so what i will have to do system dot out dot print ln i will write to the user that enter a character enter a character backslash n oh as i use the print ln i know need to give the backslash n okay then once the user has entered the character i need to read it so i will use the data type as char some c is equal to r dot let me write here r dot read okay but this will give the output in the form of an ascii but you want to store it as a character so here you will write char you will do the type casting then you will write r dot read so whatever it is read giving it will be converted into character and it will be stored once it is stored you can display the output back to the user by using the system dot out dot print ln system dot out dot print ln the user has the character is or you can write the character is okay plus for concatenation and you can write the c so whatever the character user has entered will be displayed back to the user i will close the main function and i will close the class so this is the program will be useful for you to read one character from the user okay and then you are displaying back the output to the user i hope it is clear for you now i want to discuss about the read line method i know that read method okay so read method will be useful for you to read a character but i want to read a line okay meaning is that suppose i want to read the entire string from the user then i can use the read line okay so that one we will discuss with one example 
So here what I will do is that I will read two integer values from the user. Okay. And then I will perform the addition and display output back to the user. This is the task I want to do now. So to do that one, what I will do here is that I will ask the user to enter two numbers. Enter two numbers. So what I will do here is that I will take int a comma b. Then here I will do a is equal to a is equal to I will write integer dot parse int. Okay, here i and here i should be capital and p should be small. Okay, integer dot parse int r dot read line where l should be capital. I hope you have understood. So, this will give in the form of a string. The string you want to convert into an integer. Is it clear? See, if you enter 50 here, okay. If you enter 50 here, that 50, it will be converted as a string. Means it will return in the form of a string. But the 50 you want to read, convert to into an integer. So, to do that one, you have to use this integer.parseInt method. So, this is for conversion. Similarly, b is equal to integer dot parse int r dot read line. Okay. Now, whatever the input user has entered has been stored in the variable a and variable b. Now, I will write int sum is equal to a plus b. I hope this is visible for you. Once it is done, I will write system dot again i am hoping it is visible for you system dot out dot print ln the sum is the sum is okay so this plus is for concatenation then you will close the main function and you will close the class so, I hope you have understood how to use the read method and read line method. Read method is used to read one character, read line is to read a string, okay. That string if you want to convert into integer, you have to use the integer.parseInt, okay. Now, instead of this input stream reader, buffer reader, you can even use the scanner also. The scanner class, how it is works, I will discuss with you with an example. First, let me erase this content. Let me discuss how can you read the input from the user with the help of scanner, okay? So, you need to use the scanner class and you need to create an object. Let me create an object called S, okay? Where S here should be capital letter. New scanner okay and then you need to connect this one to the system dot in okay is it clear so now if you want to read the two integers and perform the addition how to do it i will discuss with you so here i will write system dot out dot print ln enter two numbers enter two numbers okay then i will take int a comma b comma sum now first thing is that i want to read the input from the user so a is equal to then what i will do i will use a method called next int so s dot next int where i should be capital letter Okay, s dot next int and similarly b is equal to s dot next int. Okay, here also i should be capital. Now, whatever the user has entered has been stored in the variable a and variable b. Now, you can write sum is equal to a plus b. Whatever the output is there in the sum, you need to display back to the user. So, you can use system dot out dot print ln. Okay, the sum is, the sum is plus sum. 
and maybe lot of people will think that this is what uh, uh, in underscore means uh, don't think that it is underscore just to highlight that it is a capital letter like yes should be capital letter here also s should be capital letter here yes should be capital letter here string yes should be capital letter i am giving that one you can even if you understood the, after few classes if you understood i can remove this one is it clear now if you write this program let me close the main function and i will close it but still you will get an errors because you need to import the another package okay so you need to write import dot java dot util dot star next to this one then this program will work i hope you have understood you can read the input from the user with the help of two streams called input stream reader and buffered reader How even you can use the scanner also for a scanner you can create an object and that scanner should be connected to the system dot in and then using the next int you can read the integer from the user i hope you have understood still if you have any doubts don't worry i will execute these programs in the computer and show the output for you i am in the desktop java programs folder i need to create a new notepad file so to do that one i am opening the notepad app and i will save this one as read input okay read input dot java i will save and i will close the app now you can see there is a file called read input which is a java file what i will do is that i will right click and open with notepad plus plus okay now you can see the notepad plus plus is open first we will discuss about the outfield okay so class read input and then i will write public static void void main string args i'll close this one then i will open the main function here i will write system dot out dot print ln okay i will write welcome to pernica tutorials okay i'll end with a semicolon then again i will write system dot out dot print ln okay i will write here learn java so this i want as an output so i will close the main function i will close the class i will save this one okay now i want to execute this program before executing i need to compile so i will open the command prompt now i need to go to the java programs which is there on the desktop so i have written a command called cd change directory the desktop now you are in the desktop you need to go to the java programs now in the java programs there is a file called read input dot java so you need to write a command called java c read input dot java as there are no errors the class file has been successfully created you need to run it java read input now you got the output as welcome to pernica tutorials learn java this is fine okay let me close it now instead of print ln if i use print print then what will be the output we will look at it so i will open the command prompt then i will go to the cd desktop will next time we will not close this one cd java programs okay then i will write java c as you have done the few changes in the program again you need to compile the program read input dot java okay there are no errors now you can execute java read input now we got the output as welcome to pernica tutorials in the same line learn java you got okay is it fine now what i want to do is that i want to do small changes here i will provide the backslash n now let me save it and open the command prompt let me compile the program again and run the program again you got the output as welcome to pernica tutorials in the new line you got the 
learn Java. So, what is the point here is that if you use the print ln, whatever you are printing will be printed and the control will go to the next line and in the next line it will print learn Java. But however, if you use the print method, whatever you are printing it will print and the it will be stay in the same line. So, in the same line it will display as learn Java. So, if you use the backslash n which is an escape character, then it will go to the con after printing this one it will go to the next line. Now, we will discuss about the system dot in to read the input from the user. To read the input from the user, you need to use the two streams called input stream reader and buffer reader. So, input stream reader, I am creating an object called i, new input stream reader, you need to connect this one to the system dot in, okay. Then buffered reader, look at here there is a buffered reader, something r is equal to new buffered reader, okay. For this one you need to connect to the input stream reader. So, input stream reader is connected to the keyboard, buffered reader is connected to the input stream reader. So, you have created two objects called i and r. Now, if you want to read a character, first you need to ask the user to enter the character. So, I will use system.out.println and I will write here enter a character, okay. Now, what I need to do? I need to create a character variable, so char c, I will simply write r.read, okay, r.read and then I will write system.out.println, okay, the character is, the character is, okay, concatenation, you need to write C. Sir, you can ask me, sir, you need to import the module, you need to write here throws exception and here you need to convert into character, all these things we will do. Before doing that, if it does not write them, what will happen, I will show you, okay. Now, let me save this program and again compile it. So, Java C read input dot Java. Look at here, you are getting several errors. What is the error it is showing? Input stream reader cannot find symbol called input stream reader. Are you able to understand? So, you need to import the package. So, which package you need to import? Java dot IO. From that one everything you need to import, okay. Now let me save it, okay. And then again I will compile the program. You can see what is it is showing the error, incompatible types, possible lose the conversion from into character. So you need to convert into a characters, okay. I have done this one, okay. I will write here care, okay. I will save it. Now let me compile the program again. So, what I will do is that I will type CLS so that it will clear the screen and here I will write Java C read input dot Java. Is it clear? So, look at here what is the warning you got error unreported exception IO exception must be caught or declared to be thrown. So, you need to handle the exception. So, what you have to write throws exception. So, this is exception handling, we will discuss separately about it, okay. Here just we will use it. Again, I will compile the program. Now, you can see we did not get any errors. Now, I can execute it with the help of Java command and read input. Now, it is asking me to enter a character. I will enter the P. Now, you got the output as the character is P, okay. Is it clear? I hope you are able to understand the point. Now, what I want to do is that I want to read the two integers and perform the sum. So, what I will do, what are the modifications I will do here is read two numbers or enter two numbers. Is it clear? Or instead of that one, first we will write enter the first number, okay, enter the first number. In board, we cannot write the lengthy program, so I made it little bit short. So, here we can write how many number of lines we can write here. So, 
system dot out dot print l and enter the first number so i have declared two integer three integers such as a b and sum so what i will do is that a is equal to integer dot parse int okay you need to use the r dot read line okay similarly you need to ask the user to enter the second number so print ln enter the second number now i will write b is equal to integer dot parse int you can see parse int it is coming okay r dot read line now i want to perform the sum so sum is equal to a plus b then i will write system dot out dot print ln okay the summation is or the sum is okay and then i will write the plus and here i will write sum okay everything is done okay let me save this program and again let me execute it okay java c read input dot java first i am compiling the program okay there are no errors now i will write java read input it is asking the enter the first number i am entering 56 second number 67 you got the output as 123 i hope you have understood how to use the read to read a character read line to read a string and that string we are converting into an integer now we will discuss how to use the scanner okay let me okay let me not change this entire thing i will change these two lines only scanner s is equal to new scanner okay that one i need to connect to the system dot in okay enter the first number okay int a comma b comma sum here instead of using this one let me change the thing so you have created an object called s yes. then you need to write next int okay then similarly here also you can write s yes dot next int okay now if i save the program and execute we will get an errors look at here i need to compile it now we are getting several errors cannot find symbol scanner so you need to import the module okay so import java dot util from that one everything i am importing i will save the program again and i will here press cls now i will write java c read input dot java still we are getting an error called variable s yes of okay in next int have we given small i let's see yeah here we have given the small i so that's why you are getting an error okay now let me compile the program again there are no errors so class file has been successfully created we need to run it so java read input enter the first number let me enter 6 8 14 i got so this is the way you can read the input from the user and also display output back to the user if you still have any doubts related to this concept feel free to ask me in the comment section i will try to clear your doubts as early as possible Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.